Hi everyone, welcome back for our last lesson of this course. In this lesson, we are going to see how blockchain technology is used in enterprise. So we have our different use cases here, as you can see, and we are going to talk about how they are being used in the enterprise so that we can have a general understanding of its implications in the enterprise world. So let's start with supply chain management since we talked about this before in our use cases video. We said that with the supply chain management, we can have a more transparent process about our products, where they are coming from, how they are created, and also it's easier to track the process through the blockchain. So actually, Walmart is using blockchain to track the provenance and safety of its products. So we can give Walmart here as an example. So the healthcare industry is similar. We can have data in this healthcare industry that is safe and we can actually with its interoperability connect this decentralized infrastructure with our infrastructure that we already have. So we can have data across platforms. So with this transparent healthcare data, we can have data that's going to sit there it's not going to be changed so that we can relate ourselves to data. And then actually with the, this decentralized structure, we can have our data accessible to different doctors and different hospitals at the same time through the system so that the connection between the hospitals and the system and the complications of that can be on the background. And actually, Mendel Ledger, uses blockchain to connect pharmaceutical companies, distributors, and pharmacists so that they can have a transparent process which can be easily tracked and this way they can ensure compliance with regulations. And the third one is the finance. We talked about finance a lot during this course and this will be our last time. So with finance, as we said before, by eliminating the middleman, we can have a trustless uh, transaction process, which is faster and less costly because we are actually eliminating the middleman here. In fact, GP Morgan Chase developed its own blockchain called Quorum, which powers its interbank payment system, which is later acquired by consensus. So we are going to say GPM here as an example. In the energy field, we can have peer to peer energy trading and also we can optimize production, distribution, consumption of energy by enabling smart grids, microgrids, and peer-to-peer -peer energy trading. So Power Ledger, let's say Power Ledger here as an example, is a platform where users can sell their excess power to their neighbors or the grid. So our last one is media and entertainment. Of course, we had to talk about the media and entertainment. So here, with the power of the blockchain, we can actually empower creators and the consumers by incentives, digital rights, royal payments, and much more. Since we don't have intermediaries and censorship, and the participation can come from anyone with ease, this process will be much easier for content creators. For an example, Spotify has acquired a startup called Media Chain, which helps artists and labels to claim ownership of their products. So let's put Spotify as an example here. And as you can see, these are not all the examples because there are not enough time to talk about all the current examples and different fields and different examples are created every day. With this lesson, what we saw is actually we have a lot of use for enterprise too. And it's not for the future reference, but we already started working with blockchain on enterprise. And we saw companies like Walmart, JP Morgan Chase, and Spotify already making use of this technology. So again, Web3 technology is a transformative our current day-to-day -day use of the web, but also it's a very, very nice solution in many cases for the enterprise. Now, this will be all for this lesson. Thank you for listening to me on this course the whole time. And I hope that you learned a deeper understanding of the Web3 technologies 
and its implications in our daily lives. We saw where Web3 come from, and we also saw the use cases and the underlying technologies of Web3. We compared it with Web2, we saw its power compared to Web2, and also we saw its weakness compared to Web2. And then we moved on with the enterprise and we looked how it's used in the enterprise. With all this knowledge, we can have a bigger picture of the Web3. And when we talk about the Web3, instead of talking from just one perspective, we can have both perspective of Web2, Web3 in many different fields so that we can have a holistic understanding of this new technology. Again, thank you very much for listening to me on this video and I wish you the best luck in your future careers, hopefully in Web3. Thank you very much and have a nice one.